Science is a pretty scary word. What does it mean? Who are these scientists and what do they do? A few years ago, I thought science was just mixing chemicals together, watching smoke and flame, doing math on a whiteboard, and then figuring out that E equals MC squared. Science, to me, was this tangled mess of intimidating ideas and famous smart people. I saw becoming a scientist and becoming the king of England as equally possible career paths. Then I met research scientist Dr. Inhan Lee, and now sometimes I wear a homemade shirt that has two different types of RNA on it. It all started one day when I learned that my parents had signed me up for this genetics and medicine summer camp. I agreed to give it a try, but had very low expectations, because I already knew about Punnett squares, and I didn't want to be a doctor. It was only a half-day camp, and I had nothing better to do, so I went. The camp was run by Dr. Lee and was targeted at high school students with no previous exposure to biology. But before teaching us anything about biology, she taught us about computational genomics and bioinformatics. I thought I was way in over my head until I realized that I could understand the concepts and they were actually fascinating. The thing that captured me the most was this idea of personalized medicine. So personalized medicine is a relatively simple concept that revolutionizes medical practice. Conventional medicine starts with a diagnosis and then proceeds directly to a treatment. The treatment depends on ex is precisely the diagnosis, and when there are multiple treatment options, such as there are when the diagnosis is something like cancer, a physician might make a decision based on previous results with patients or maybe recent research. So it's diagnosis, then treatment, and then you have outcomes. But the problem is, with many, with many d diseases, especially cancers, the outcomes aren't the same for all patients. Even when there's an identical di diagnosis, treatments can vary widely, and even after billions of dollars have been spent developing drugs, they're not effective for all patients. So why? Why do outcomes differ between patients with identical diagnoses and treatments? Because you're special on a molecular level. So different individuals can have vastly different levels of certain molecules in their cells. If these molecules are measurable and their measurements indicate a certain phenomenon, they're called biomarkers. If the phenomenon they indicate is, for example, uh, sensitivity to specific treatments for specific diseases, biomarkers become a powerful tool for the prescription of medications. So personalized medicine is just the application of biomarkers to this process of medicine. You start, of course, with a diagnosis like before, but then proceed to a biomarker analysis where you measure specifically identified molecules in the patient and compare their profile of these molecules to those of cells and other patients that have been tested in labs and in the clinic before. Comparing those profiles to previous outcomes is a powerful predictive tool that would allow physicians to make diagnoses based on actual data. So then, when you go to the outcomes, you see a much more positive outcome for all of the cells that are treated, because each patient has been treated with a drug that has been chosen specifically for their specific individual molecular environment of their disease. No longer is a single drug expected to be effective for all patients. And although each patient has an identical diagnosis, each one receives a different treatment plan with different drugs, different amounts of the same drug, or different combinations of drugs. This database prescription is more likely to lead to positive outcomes for each patient. Now, of course, there are limitations. Gene expression and other biomarkers, like most things, is a spectrum, and there are gray areas and contradictions. The human body is a beautiful mess of liquids and molecules that's organized but exquisitely chaotic in ways that nobody quite understands. It will take a vast amount of research to create the knowledge base necessary to make personalized medicine a practical reality. However, recent advances in computer technology and analytical software are making this work much simpler. That doesn't mean it's easy. It's difficult, complicated, confusing, and very frustrating. But that also means that a teenager could do it. I know that because I've done, I've done this sort of work for the past two years, and I hang out on the weekends with other teenage personalized medicine researchers. So here's a picture of what teenagers look like doing bioinformatics. Oh, 
that's the wrong image. That's what it looks like when teenagers spend their weekends uh, playing video games. This is what it looks like when teenagers do bioinformatics. So high school students are a vast untapped um, resource of computer savvy for future researchers. We have the technology needed to make health personalized medicine a reality. All we need now is guidance, education, and support from people who can teach us how to do this research. Science can be life-changing on so many levels. Learning facts, doing research, and writing papers is of course valuable and important. But more than anything, science is thinking critically about problems and using logic to address questions efficiently. Science has changed how I think about the world while continuously changing the world I'm thinking about. The opportunity to be a part of science is the greatest gift I, any youth or you, could possibly discover. Thank you.